This video is on power and root. These operations are more complicated than, say, addition or subtraction. The symbol for a power is the star or a carrot, depending on which one you're looking at. If you're playing academic games, a power would be written in this notation, with the base on the left, the power in the middle, and the exponent on the right. In normal mathematics, however, a power might be just written as 2 and then the 3 in the upper right corner. The square root sign is just the regular root sign as seen in mathematics. Power and root are inverses, just like addition, subtraction, and multiplication and division. If you look here, for example, addition and subtraction are inverses. If you look at 3 plus 2, that equals 5. If you take 5, if you take five and subtract 2 from it, you'd get 3, bringing you back to the original value. The same is for multiplication and division, as seen here. For powers and roots, if you did 3 to the power of 2, you'd get 9. If you, if you did square root of 9, you'd get 3. We'll start off with powers. In powers, a is multiplied by itself by b times. What this means, if you look at the notation form, a is what we call in math the base, and b is the exponent. What you do is you take a and you multiply a by itself by the value of b. So if a was 2 and b was 3, we would take 2 and multiply it by itself 3 times. In academic games, power is found on the green cube. So if you look at this first example here, 4 to the power of 2. We look, a is 4, a is the base, and b is 2, which is the exponent. So we take the base and multiply it by itself b number of times. So we take 4 and multiply it by itself once, so we get two fours, because the value of the exponent is 2. So 4 times 4 is 16, so 16 would be the answer. If you look at this other example here, it's 2 to the power of 5. So how we can tackle this problem is look, a is 2, and then b, the exponent, is 5. So we take a, which is 2, and we multiply it by itself 5 times to get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. When you multiply that together, you get 32, which is the answer. Here are some practice problems. Try them yourself and then pause the video and we'll go over them. Here are the answers. For 3 to the power of 3, we would just take 3 and multiply it by itself 3 times to get 27. For 2 to the power of 7, we take 2 and multiply it by itself 7 times to get 128. There are some important notes when working with powers. First of all, any number to the power of 0 equals 1. Additionally, 0 to the power of any number equals 0 because 0 when multiplied with anything always equals 0. a to the power of 1 equals a. Any number to the power of 1 would be that number because when you multiply something once, you technically just keep that same number. And finally, 0 to the power of 0 is undefined and it's illegal in academic games. So now we'll move on to roots. If a to the power of 2 equals x, then a is the square root of x. So if you look down here, this is the anatomy of a square root. We have a radical on the corner of the root, which is b. The symbol is the square root symbol, and then a is called the radicand. One quick note I want to make, when you see a blank square root sign with no radicand, then you always assume that 2 is the radicand of the square root. You write the radicand, so if it's 3, it would be a cube root. In order to understand more clearly, let's look at the example first. This example is square root of 49. Since there's no radical, we assume that it's 2. Since the radical is 2, we need two numbers that will multiply to get 49. And these numbers have to be the same number. We can look and see that there is 7 as the answer. 7 can multiply by itself twice to get 49. So we take 7 as the answer. We also have things called perfect squares. Perfect squares are numbers that when put under a square root come out to equal a rational whole number. For example, 9 is a perfect square because when we put it under the square root, it comes out to be 3. 3 times 3 equals 9. So 9 would be a perfect square. Additionally, if you want to find a perfect square, you can also take any number, let's say 4 for example, and raise it to a power of 2. 4 to the power of 2 is 16, and square root of 16 is 4. So 16 is a perfect square. 
14, on the other hand, is not a perfect square because there are no rational whole numbers that can multiply together twice to get that number. So it's known as an irrational number. Here are some practice problems. Pause the video and try to work them out. The answers will appear in a couple of seconds. Here are the answers. For square root of 64, remember when there's no radical, then you have to assume that it's two. Since this is the second root, there's a two in the radical, you need to find two numbers that are the same number that multiply to equal 64. I can think of eight, so eight would be the answer. For this one, the third root of 125, there's a three as a radical, so it would be the third root. Now you need three of the same number that multiply to get 125. The answer would be five. Now that we covered the basics, here are some really good tricks when working with power and root. These tricks are gonna make you want to put power and root into the required part of the mat instead of in forbidden. So these strategies are called the whole strategy. What it basically does is it creates a hole where you can put any expressions and numbers that you want, but the equation would still be the same value. Let me show how it works. So let's assume that the power isn't required and you have to make a solution with power. The goal is five. I would do three plus two, parentheses, minus, in parentheses, zero to the power of nine. If you subtract zero from anything, it's still that same number. So our real solution is 3 plus 2, but we subtracted by 0 because 0 to the power of anything is 0, which got us 5. What it created is it created a hole where you can put pretty much anything. It doesn't have to be just 9. You can put other expressions in this hole to get the same value of 5. So whatever people put in required, you can just add that into your hole. Here's another example. 3 plus 2 times 5 times 7 root 1. Anything to the root of 1 is 1. So 5 times 7, 35 root of 1 is 1. If you multiply something with 1, you get that same something that you started with. So 3 plus 2 is 5 times 1 is 5. It created another hole, this time with the root symbol, that you can put in any expression that you want and get the same value that you started with. Here's a third example. This one is 5 times in parentheses. 1 to the power of 8 divided by 2. 1 to the power of anything is 1. So it would be 5 times 1 is 5. This yet created another hole where you can put in any expression you want. As long as it's not a fraction. One big thing when working with holes is that people tend to put numbers like let's say 9 divided by 2, which doesn't equal the whole number. Be very careful with your holes sometimes. Try to keep them whole numbers because you can't use fractions with square roots or powers. So this one, we just create a whole one to the power of anything, let's say a whole number, and five times one to the power of that whole would equal five. Thank you for watching this video on power and roots. If you have a question, please leave them in the comments below and stay tuned for more content. Thank you.